Where's Jeff? We're not on. Okay, thank you. The meeting of the Personnel Administrative Affairs Committee is being held on Monday, April 5th at 7 p.m. via teleconference. As chairperson of the Personnel Administrative Affairs Committee, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of the COVID pandemic in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12 pursuant to executive order 2020-04, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Please note that there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, I am confirming that we are providing public access to the meeting by telephone with additional access possibility by video or other electronic means. We are utilizing Zoom and the meeting link can be found on the agenda as well as on the city's website. You can also join by telephone by dialing 1-929-205-6099. Meeting ID 870-0295-5230 and passcode 9999999. The public also may view this meeting on Comcast Channel 16. We previously gave notice to the public of the necessary information for accessing the meeting through public postings. Instructions have also been provided on the City of Nashua's website at www.nashuanh.gov and publicly noticed at City Hall and the Nashua Public library. If anyone has a problem accessing the meeting via phone or channel 16, please call 603-821-2049 and they will help you connect. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting via the methods mentioned above, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. Let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance. When each member states their presence, please also state whether there is anyone in the room with you during this meeting, which is required under the right to know law. Alderwoman Kelly will now call the roll. Thank you, Chairwoman. I look forward to the day we don't have to say contemporaneously ever again. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay. Alderman uh, Ben Clemens. Uh, thank you. I am here. I um, can hear everyone mm -hmm. and um, by myself in the room. Alderman Lopez. I'm here, I can hear and see everybody and there's nobody in the room with me. Alderman Kelly is here, I'm alone and I can hear everyone. Alderman Cleaver. I'm here and I'm with my daughter. I can hear everyone. And Alderman Karen. Yes, I am here, I am alone and I can hear everyone. All members are present. Okay. Also in attendance, also I see, sorry, you wanna do it? <laughs> Go ahead. Um, also in attendance, I see Mayor Jim Donches. Uh, we have Alderman Klee, Alderman Schmidt with us. And um, I believe Energy and Environment Manager, Doria Brown. Um, I also wanted to note, I think you didn't think Cole Morgan could make it, but he is on as well. Thank you very much. Do we have anyone in the public that would like to speak before this committee? I don't see any members of the public present. 
Okay, thank you. Do we have any communications? None. Okay, so we will begin with the interviews. Uh, Mayor Donjev, are you there? Should we start with um, Cole Morgan? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Uh, it's nice to come before you. And as on other occasions, I have several nominations that I wish to uh, present to you tonight. All right. Uh, the first, as you suggested, is Cole Morgan, who I am nominating for the Cable TV Advisory Board. Uh, Cole is an entrepreneur in Nashua who's tech savvy. He's currently the CEO of Stage Connect which is a New England based uh, tech startup. Uh, he's worked in a number of uh, media related enterprises uh, in film, in web, in technology, doing live events, uh, streaming events. And therefore he is well suited for the cable TV advisory board. He's definitely expressed an interest. He lives on French Hill and I will turn you over to uh, Mr. Morgan to just give you a brief uh, overview as to why he's interested in uh, the Cable TV Advisory Board and how his background may assist him in serving on that committee. Okay, thank you, Mr. Morgan. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so I'm interested in being on the committee um, primarily to further Nashua's uh, connectivity to spread uh, high speed broadband and potentially look into opening a municipal broadband um, company here in Nashua. The over 50% of, of the United States doesn't have access to broadband internet, which is kind of a, a fun fact. And I want to make sure that everyone in Nashua regardless of income, location, you know, business or, or, or citizen has access to some of the highest speed internet in the country. Cause I think that's going to give, um, give the residents here the, the highest possible, you know, leg up and, and chance to, to compete on a global scale. Okay. Do we have anyone from the committee who has any questions? For Mr. Morgan. Alderman Lopez. Uh, I want to thank you for volunteering and being interested in this. Um, I know we've been talking for years about the potential um, for adding uh, a more accessible uh, broadband and, and uh, Wi-Fi connectivity, and I'm glad that you're, you see a path uh, towards doing that. Um, I'm also uh, pretty um, Pretty familiar with your background at Make It Labs and as uh, you know in professional um, as a business uh, marketing person, uh, I was pretty impressed by your efforts to pivot during the COVID-19 epidemic so that events uh, could take place digitally. And I think we really could have used um, that kind of mindset with regards to how we approach education and how we approach uh, employment and uh, other economic aspects. So I'm really looking forward to your contribution um, on the cable television advisory board. Um, is it within that committee specific um, range, I guess, mission to, to focus on this or is that just an initial step towards public service? Well, what, one of the principal tasks of the cable TV advisory board and the reason that it is gearing up now is that the new contract with uh, Comcast is being negotiated and that's for cable TV. But of course, Comcast is also an internet provider. Uh, the, the other in that being um, Fairpoint or consolidated communications. But certainly uh, because as a um, internet provider, the committee can discuss with Comcast as an internet provider, the internet and the broadband that they do uh, provide and hopefully um, advance the, uh, the availability of the broadband as uh, Mr. Morgan has discussed. Uh, follow up if I may? Yes, you may. Is, are we, <laughs> if they're negotiating that, 
are we still going to have to be in this marriage to Comcast exclusively, or can we look at like Verizon or any, anybody at all? Well, you're going to have to get the full uh, legal landscape from someone else, but the the city's discretion uh, regarding rates and that and things like that is really controlled by a federal law that uh, gives um, the cable providers exclusive right to set whatever rate they want. Uh, so they have a lot of latitude and a lot of discretion under federal law, but they have to go through the licensing procedure. And uh, during that time, uh, it, any issues pertaining to Comcast can be raised and sometimes get resolved. Uh, the, there are other potential bidders. Other people can bid for this uh, to, be a fr to be the uh, internet provider, but because of the advantage, as I understand it, and uh, I think Andrew Sonoda, Sonoda, who is chair of the committee, knows most about this, and he could brief you if you uh, wanted him to come in, but um, he's been through several negotiations, several contracts, uh, but um, the, the, the federal law gives them, uh, them the cable TV company advantages and Comcast has the uh, inside track when it comes to bidding because they, they have all the uh, hardware in place. Uh, this would have to be built from scratch by someone else if there were going to be a competitor. So um, I think to get more than that, you, the, you know, Mr. You know, Andrew Sunoda uh, knows a lot about this and he could give you more detail. Okay, well, relative to Mr. Morgan, um, um, you, you carry our hopes and prayers. Uh, please, please do good on this committee. Um, this is definitely an area we could see uh, future development for, and we definitely need much more uh, planning for. I think it will go hand in hand with our future um, uh, master planning effort too, having uh, better internet and um, cable uh, infrastructure would make, uh, dare I say it, an amazing marriage. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Alderman Clee. Okay. No one else from the committee? I don't see anyone's hands up. So as long as I'm not missing anyone. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, um, uh, Madam Chairwoman. Um, I, I want to uh, put my two cents in about Mr. Morgan. Um, he is a constituent, but um, I've also watched him step up and volunteer um, a and, and do so much good. And truthfully, this pandemic has shown us how many holes we truly have, even in the city of Nashua, when it comes to our cable TV and um, those who need it and don't have access to it. Um, United Way stepped up with all the hotspots and so on, but we need a lot more than that. Hotspots were just not good enough. And I feel that um, with his heart and soul that Mr. Morgan, um, is one of those people that will ensure that uh, those who need it. And truthfully, from my ward, the majority of those people were in French Hill, right around his neighbors to the left and right and back in front of him. So um, he has a vested interest right there. He'll have people knocking on his door. So I think it's a good fit. And um, I'm very proud that uh, he'll be representing Ward 3 on this committee. So thank you. Okay, thank you. So Mr. Cole, thank you so much for your willingness to volunteer on this particular committee and uh, the personnel committee will take up your vote later on in the meeting. Thank you. Mayor, you're up. Uh, Barry. Thank yes, thank you, um, Madam Chair. So next I have nominated uh, two young people to the Energy and Environment Committee. Uh, Taylor Berry, who is a student at Nashua North, as well as Dante Castel Castellano, who is a student at Nashua South. Uh, both have expressed an interest in the Environment and Energy Committee and have worked with uh, Doria Brown, the energy manager who's also on the call. 
or on the meeting. And I will ask Dory if she doesn't mind to give you any further uh, uh, detail regarding her work with uh, our two uh, students. I just wanted to say that I appreciate their willingness to become involved. It's great when young people uh, want to get involved, uh, particularly in environmental issues like this. So we really appreciate their, their interest. And with that, uh, I think Dory is here and I will, would ask her to add anything that uh, she may have. So the first thing that I have to say about these two young leaders is one word, three letters, wow. So these two are extremely impressive. So Taylor Berry actually started her green team in middle school. She's led all the efforts to green up the school that she was at. And Dante Costello is leading our local tree planting this Earth Month, which is equally amazing. And they have been attending environment and energy committees for the past two or three months. And they have been very helpful in planning this month's Earth Month activities and our roundtable event. And I'm extremely excited to have them on the committee for the next year as our student chairs. Okay, thank you. Is Taylor Barry on the line so she could give us a little background? Yes, I am. So hi, I'm Taylor, I'm 15 and I'm a freshman at Nashua North. Um, I would like to apply to be the Nashua North representative on the Nashua Energy and Environment Committee because I feel as though I have a lot of experience in the topic and that can help make a positive impact and provide a different perspective on the committee. Like Doria said, when I was in seventh grade, I founded the Green Teams at Penichuk Middle School. And two of the main projects that we worked on was rebooting the school's recycling system and restoring the school garden. I've also uh, participated in the Fridays for Future movement, which is when a few friends and I raised awareness about the climate crisis. And I led movements in our neighborhood to pick up trash uh, to reduce pollution. I've also joined the Green Club at Nashua North. And again, I hope that I will be able to join the Nashua Energy and Environment Committee so, I, so that I can work to make Nashua a better place. Okay, thank you, Taylor. Is there anyone from the personnel committee who has any questions for Ms. Uh, Barry? I would like to speak, please. Certainly, all the women, Kelly. Thank you. Um, I just want to thank both you and uh, Dante for coming forward. I know I've been, I've had the pleasure to work with both of you on the Energy and Environment Committee. And I think it's really great overall that we're putting young people on this board because we're going to be the ones who inherit uh, whatever is done now. So um, thank you for being involved early and being willing to step up now. You're welcome. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, don't so Miss Barry. Any hands. <laughs> all right. Well, Miss Barry. Uh, Mr. Clemens is. is Alderman I Clemens' hand was. It's up okay. in the corner. Alderman Clemens, you can come in before I finish. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I, I just want to say um, to both um, candidates, thank you very much for your time and your passion to the. Um, to the cause, I think that the uh, it's great when folks that are your age show a, an interest um, in the city, and uh, I think that um, you know we're going to be mm. served well by you both. So thank you for um, for coming forward. Thank you, Alderman Clemens. Okay, so Miss Barry, uh, as the previous uh, speaker, you will be coming up for approval later on in our meeting. And I too would like to thank you. It's uh, gratifying to know that young people are interested in what's going on within their city because coming down the field, you will be representing the city and all we do, good, bad, or indifferent. So I think it's wonderful that you're willing to step up and learn at a young age. Thank you. Now is uh, Dante, Castanello on the line as well. Yeah. All right. So um, should I go now? <laughs> yes, go ahead. Yes, you can. Okay. 
All right. Um, so my name is Dante Castellano. I'm a freshman at Nashua South. I'm also 15. Um, and yeah, re uh, kind of once the pandemic began is when I became more interested in the environment. I guess it wasn't like super involved in middle school, really. Um, but over the summer, we um, got more involved in stuff like that. I uh, enjoyed sometimes I pick up trash and stuff like that. But um, I actually became part of the Project Green Schools National Youth Council. Um, I applied, I think it was late summer, but the meeting started in September, I believe. And it's like once a month um, meetings where uh, it's basically just a group where we're supposed to meet. It's like kids from different parts of the country. They talk about, um, then there's some leaders. They give, a, we basically just learn about different environmental topics. And sometimes they want us to try to do mini projects. Um, the project that I'm working on that I actually learned about from uh, the National Youth Council I'm doing helping host a tree planting event on April 17th in Nashua uh, through a nonprofit, I believe, called Tree Plenish. Um, I actually learned about Tree Plenish at the National Youth Council meeting. Um, and basically, it's just uh, they basically try to help students like approximately offset, they say, uh, their school's paper usage. Um, so with that, uh, our goal was 275 trees to have planted, and we are planning on having at least, I think, 304 planted. Um, that's on, not just on April 17th, but that's like when the main event is happening. And then, um, yeah, other than that, I'm part of Planet Earth Club at uh, Nashua South, which um, it, it was kind of new this year. I mean, it was happening before, but a lot of kids left, I guess, so there was kind of a lot of new people in it. Um, Technically, I'm considered like master researcher on there, but it's I'm kind of just like considered an officer on the club. Um, not a huge club, but it's definitely fun. And I um, also enjoy volunteering and just helping out the environment any way possible, really. And I look forward to the future. Um, hope to make some changes because I'm also interested in politics. So it kind of ties in everything like that. So thank you. Thank you. Is there any, anyone from the personnel committee who has any questions for Dante? I would like to speak and Alderman Lopez is waving his hand aggressively. Okay, well, Alderwoman Kelly, you go first and then Alderman <laughs> Lopez. Thank you, uh, Dante, thank you for that uh, background. I, again, wanna say the same thing as I was saying before, I appreciate you guys being involved. Um, it's really, really important uh, to have young people involved. And I just wanted to shout out your love for down getting paper use down because Dory and I have talked about this quite a bit. Um, so I, I hope that when you join the committee, we can work on that together because I think it's really important. And I know that pandemic life has probably helped us a bit in that area, but uh, let's keep going. So thank you. Alderman okay. Lopez. Thank you. Um, so first to Taylor and uh, Dante, I wanted to say um, I'm grateful that you guys are willing to serve. Um, and I'm looking forward to your contribution. Um, I also want to note, since several of the committee members noticed it, I just switched my computer over from my phone. Uh, that is why my background was in fact a dumpster fire. It had nothing to do with you guys. That was probably more symbolic of just my own bad timing. So um, I am looking forward to your contributions uh, to the city uh, and helping us with our, our carbon footprint uh, with recognizing the opportunities that environmental stewardship brings. Um, We've had a lot in Ward 4, particularly of areas that have been cleared. Uh, for example, the um, trees along the riverbank have been removed. Um, and I know there's a lot of concern right now because Penachuk has removed uh, a number of trees uh, in order, ironically, to build a solar farm. So uh, Nashua needs its green space. Nashua needs its environmental stewards. And it's encouraging to see not only that we have more people joining um, that dialogue and that effort, but that you're young, that you're passionate, that you have ideas that are founded in data and research, and that you're willing to make those ideas something that benefits the community. So thank you to both of you for, um, for uh, being willing to step forward. Thank you. Anyone else uh, have any questions for Dante? I'm trying to make sure I don't miss anyone this time. I don't see anyone. Okay. So Dante, uh, thank you for stepping up to the plate and uh, your willingness to serve on this very important committee. Um, we didn't have that back when, but uh, 
it's nice to know that we have some young people that are willing to step up to the plate and look to the future. So your name will also be brought up later on in the committee. So I thank you uh, for doing that. Uh, Mayor, I also want to thank you for bringing some new and exciting uh, young people on board for these committees. I think it's great. Um, you're going to get some new ideas and uh, that will work well for the city in the future. I do have a question for you. Uh, are you going to stay to have a conversation concerning uh, the ordinance um, for um, the committee, the uh, ethnic committee? If you would the like the cultural committee, I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, I understand uh, that. Uh, pardon? Okay. I understand that Alderman Lopez is um, looking to bring in a, an amendment and that he spoke to you about it. So I wondered if you were going to stay on. Well, I was um, not going to because I think the uh, proposal has broad support and. Uh, I will let uh, those other sponsors uh, carry the ball, but uh, I have spoken with Alderman Lopez regarding his idea, which I think is a good one. He would like to uh, include a um, member of the deaf community as a, mem a member of the um, Cultural Connections Committee as well, which I think to me seems like a good idea. So uh, we'd like to get uh, that participation. So I cer I'm certainly uh, fully supportive of Alderman Lopez's idea. Okay, so you have no problem with the amendment? No problem whatsoever. I think he's come up with a good suggestion. Okay, thank you very much, Mayor, again. All right, thank you. And thank okay. you to our attendees. You're welcome. Okay, on with the meeting. Application to license hawkers, peddlers, vendors, there are none. Okay, appointments by the mayor. Alderman Kelly. I move to recommend the following confirmation appointment to the Cable Television Advisory Advisory Committee. Cole Morgan with a term to expire March 31st, 2024. The following reappointment to the Citizens Advisory Commission. Lisa, I don't know how to say that, Tor Torongo with a term to expire October 1st, 2023. The following new appointments to the Energy and Environment Committee, Taylor Bailey and Dante Castellano, both with terms to expire April 30th, 2022. The following reappointments to the Historic District Committee, William Slovinki, with a term to expire June 30th, 2022. Mary Ellen McKay and Robert Vorbach, both with terms to expire December 31st, 2023. And Christopher Barrett with a term to expire January 31st, 2024, uh, and the following reappointment to the Zoning Board of Adjustment, Nicholas Kanakis, with a term to expire September 11th, 2023, by roll call. Okay, will you, the clerk, please call the roll. Just making sure there weren't any hands before I did that. Um, Alderman Karen. Yes. Alderman Clemens. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Kelly is a yes. Alderman Cleaver. Yes. You have five yeas and zero nays. Okay, so that motion has carried. Unfinished business. There's none. Okay, new business resolutions. We have before us R21-125. Um, I will move to recommend final passage of R21-25 by roll call. This is supporting non- partisan fair redistricting. I missed the description. Okay, that's fine. So, um, Alderman Smith, are you here so that you can, um, since you're the sponsor of this resolution? I am here. Certainly, I'd be glad to, as well as uh, Alderman Clee and uh, also Skip Cleaver, Alderman Cleaver. Uh, the three of us uh, realized uh, 10 years ago when the last redistricting happened that there were some very unusual things that took, uh, that, that, that happened, uh, happened because one party really wanted to take control of Ward 3, which of course is Alderman Klee's ward. 
Uh, it was to be decided originally to divide it with a uh, town across the river sure. in, if, uh, in Hudson, I believe. Is that correct? And um, the, the problem, of course, is that, you know, Nashua sure. is Nashua. We are in Hudson. And um, the intent was simply to divide that ward to make it more less democratic. And um, we found that although we pushed really hard and we were able to keep uh, Ward 3 whole in Nashua, we realized that the rest of the state really didn't have the same power that we did at that point. And many places were divided and, and connected in strange ways. Uh, for instance, the governor's council, um, one of the uh, districts goes from one side of the state completely over to the other. And the intent was to capture all of one party in that so that the rest of the state could be of that party. And um, we wanna make sure that doesn't happen again. So we're asking, we're asking the House and the Senate to make sure that this is done in a fair way. And basically that's all that we're asking at this point. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Alderman Schmidt. Um, Alderman Clee, do you wanna to add to this particular resolution since you uh, signed on. Um, yes, thank you, uh, Madam Chairwoman. Um, I, I'm basically just going to echo what um, Alderwoman Schmidt um, had to say. Um, I think it's important for Nashua to stay whole in general, um, whether it be Ward 3, whether it be Ward 1, or any of our bordering uh, wards. It could be Ward 7, it could be any of these things. It's extraordinarily important. Um, I think for Nashua to stay, as we as we keep saying, whole within Nashua, mm -hmm. we're a large enough community. Um, I think that within Nashua, we're strong. We have um, a loud voice if this were to happen again. Um, but I think, in general, each of the communities needs to take a stance in in the same way. Um, we cannot allow this type of um, redistricting just to um, to keep. Um, one party whole. It shouldn't be that way. I wish we had done more independent um, redistricting, but that's not the way it is. So we need to take stances in other directions. So thank you very much. Okay. Alderman Cleaver, um, since you're on the personnel committee, do you, do you have anything to add? It's very important. Of course, every 10 years we have redistricting. Every 10 years it becomes a problem and gerrymandering is in full swing. And so we want to keep Nashua whole, so to speak. 27 times we have, we have uh, elected representatives from the Democratic Party and we, we want those, those wards to be fairly representative. If they were Republican, so be it, but it happens that we have Democrats in charge in, in our wards and we don't want any division unnecessarily to divide up Nashua or any part thereof. So it's very, very important that we keep it whole and keep the 27 positions as they are. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else from the personnel committee that has any questions to any of the sponsors? I thought I saw Alderman Lopez's hand up. Okay, Alderman and Lopez. Alderman Clemens and myself. Yeah, okay. I have comments. Um, the um, with the redistricting uh, or the way the districting is already done, um, I'm concerned about gerrymandering too, because gerrymandering can lead to gentrification. Um, particularly has a lot of uh, downtown urban um, uh, environments uh, that are in some ways looked down upon by other parts of the city. Um, I think they represent the diverse strength, uh, multiculturalism. This is where Nashua's heart and soul comes from uh, because of all the different types of people that are living here. And uh, that can be misconstrued where different cultures um, can come together, but also where different uh, living uh, situations and, and priorities. We've already seen um, a vastly differing perception of how we should approach things like on-street parking, where People who live here and live downtown are 100%. We need more on-street parking. We need to do this. We need to figure it out. And people who don't necessarily live downtown or even in the city are not in favor of that, are not urgently seeing that need. Um, and that affects the decision-making and the rights of those 
uh, residents to be able to advocate for what goes on in their own neighborhoods. Um, Ward 4 has a, a very unusual shape. There's like a whole pseudopod sticking into it from uh, Ward 3, because at some point when they were districting, somebody decided to just completely go around Franklin Street and try to lump that in with Ward 3. Um, and ultimately, in order to extend the population amount, they put together some diff very different uni uh, universes. The Fairmont Street neighborhoods are very, very different from the Pine Street neighborhoods, both in terms of um, density of, of housing and in terms of needs and you know expectations. And it's worth pointing out that uh, Ward 7 looks like it's just sticking a whole bunch of chunk into Ward 8. Um, so that's what you get when you have politicized uh, redistricting. Um, it's already a little awkward to see. Um, there's even an event like a street uh, all by itself sticking into my adjacent um, ward uh, on Worcester Street. And I think a more partisan, uh, a less partisan approach, more, more neighborhood focused approach would have resulted in people being able to vote right near where they live instead of having to come all the way across the river and down to Lead Street um, and a lot of other circumstances, which are just unfortunate. So I thoroughly support this. Um, I think um, it's important for us to make a stand in whatever way we can as a city uh, against efforts to divide us. Thank you. Welcome, thank you. Alderman Clement. Uh, thank you. So a couple of things. Um, one is uh, actually the I was on the board of Alderman when we redistricted last time, mm. and the um, the concern about Ward Three was actually not about Hudson. It was worse. It was Litchfield that they wanted to put um, Ward Three with, which if you know anything about uh, ge geography in the area. The only way that a voter would have been able to get from one to the other would have been to take a canoe across the river and then go, of course, to their voting uh, spot in Litchfield. So um, Nashua was spared uh, from that, but there are some wards in Manchester that ended up getting lumped in uh, with Litchfield to do the same uh, thing. Mm. So it, it was, it's definitely, um, it's definitely something that that I support. Um, but in regards, there's also another portion of the redistricting law, which is in place now. And I did want to mention it. I wasn't going to mention it, but I do want to mention it now, um, which is um, basically when you are redistricting, it is considered fair to try to keep your current district whole as much as you can and to try to um and to try to limit the you know gerrymandering or or adding of new neighborhoods here and there mm -hmm. and one of the difficult challenges that nashua had and i was on the there was actually chairman of the personnel committee the last time we did this um, one of the challenges that we had was basically keeping those our wards intact. Um, Nashua has always done a very good job at doing the redistricting in the sense that we make sure that we're doing it where we go by that principle of keeping the original wards together. So if you look through history at how the boundaries of these wards have changed over the years, they are for the most part, very much, they look very much as they did 30, 40 years ago. Um, so I think that, um, you know, when you look at things like Ward 4 being on both sides of the river, it has historically been on both sides of the river for the last 30 years. And so, you know that there comes a time when you want to look at you know what are the needs of the um of the district and you want to look at the entire district but there are also historical uh things that you need to to balance that and um so just because something is, is on a map doesn't look like it necessarily makes sense um there are historical things about it 
that that were done that particular way. So I think um, you know if you're if you're I think we need I think basically what we need to do here in the city going forward is to keep ensuring that our districts are basically fair from a from a population standpoint and not um, take into consideration you know political parties and, and and things of that nature and we have done a very good job with that in this city uh, we were very I was very proud to have been a part of the last time we did the um, the redistricting here and um, so at least politically from a standpoint of the city of Nashua, dividing its own wards, we do a good job. Uh, the state, on the other hand, um, there's much to be desired and, and therefore I, I certainly support uh, this resolution. Thank you, Alderman Clemens. Alderman Kelly. Uh, thank you, Chair Rowan. I just wanted to thank Alderman Schmidt and her uh, colleagues at the State House for bringing this forward. Uh, we got quite a bit, or I did at least quite a bit of um, email supporting this from constituents um, and uh, I know it's been passed in 44 other towns so um, I'm I'm glad to support this I think it's it's a no-brainer we everyone should have an equal and fair vote um, and that is what this is saying and so again appreciate that and, and look forward to pushing this forward okay thank you Alderman Lopez has to stand up again <laughs> of course of course you do, Alderman Lopez. <laughs> Does that mean I'm called on? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, just making sure. Um, so uh, with uh, respect to what uh, Alderman Clemens said, uh, I just wanted to point out that uh, yes, uh, Ward 4 has always been on either side of the river, but we also had the part of the river or the part of the city that was adjacent to the river, according to the older maps that I have. Um, but when they, they bubbled that section in, in order to give it to Ward 3, um, I think they did that for political reasons. And then in order, to, in order to balance it, they pushed the boundaries of Ward 4 up because a lot of the neighbors up in the northern part of Ward 4, like the first thing I said when I, uh, that they said when I was running is, why did everybody change where we vote? So if there's a, a broad spectrum misconception uh, on the part of the neighbors who live up by just beyond uh, Amherst Street, um, then, I mean, that's just what I'm hearing from them. Uh, but I think that's what I was bringing up when I brought up gentrification is as population density increases and as uh, people decide politically speaking, they maybe don't want urban populations to have central representation, they might split that and some area might be, a, a decreasing amount of area is covered where people are living more densely. And then suddenly you have a lot of far flung areas being absorbed into basically a representative who is uh, going to have to represent everything. So I'm happy to do it. I just don't want to see more of it happening because I think it doesn't, it's not the same kind of representation to have a ward full of people that are living in urban areas and a ward full of people who are living with suburban needs. Um, I think it takes a little bit from both. And I think the aldermen who represent the more far flung uh, wards do a great job because they're in touch with that experience and, and that um, that group. And while I am happy to do it in Ward 4, it also takes a lot of energy to get around the different sections of it uh, because it's such a weird situation. And I could see that continuing into other wards and suddenly it becoming very difficult to accurately and effectively represent everybody. So that's what I meant. I mean, I understand that the wards have been different in many, many areas uh, over time. I think I have one where the area that I'm in is actually was part of Ward 3 at one point, but um, I think it's important that an intelligent approach be taken to redistricting rather than a political. And I do mean that those are two different things. Alderman Clee, and then I see Alderman Clemens's hand up again, June. Okay, okay. Let's go with Alderman Clemens first since he's on the committee and then Alderman Clee. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, so actually the 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 portion that you um, Alderman Lopez was talking about, which was below the which I think is Cotton Mill Square, 
um, was traded out for Ward 3 because there was a state representative living who had been redistricted out of her own uh, seat, and that was Representative Mary Gorman. Um, and we had inadvertently created the map without taking into consideration where the current state reps live. So that's how nonpartisan we were approaching it. And there's a there's a nonpartisan approach, and then there's fairness. And what my position was as chairman of the committee at the time was, look, we don't want to gerrymander out certain representatives. And actually, um, there was a Republican rep, Rep. Hogan, who we had done the same inadvertently to as well. And we fixed that for her, uh, keeping her in Ward 7 and um, Representative Gorman in Ward 4. And, um, you know, that to me, those types of decisions are not political per se. Th those are decisions that should be made um, to make sure that you're keeping your representatives, you know, there and able to continue to serve should their voters choose to do so. Um, the other thing is one of the things too that Nashua is going to face, which was an interesting thing, is population shift. As between 2000 and 2010, the population of shift in Nashua uh, definitely occurred, and it occurred over in the Maplewood area around Captain's Corner. There were a ton of new residents down in that area, and actually at the time. Um, we were losing people up uh, in other parts of the city, particularly in the Tree Streets area and, and around Ward 4. Um, there was a high vacancy rate. It was a completely different world than it is now. Um, and so the basically you could see that population shift kind of down sort of into the newer um, developments in the southern part of the city. So um, it's an interesting it's an interesting process that we'll all um, once the census is completed and we'll all be a part of. But um, you know, I think what we're going to see this time is that the population is going to shift back, um, and so some of the things that you know you're going to see more people, I think, now living in the center of the city as opposed to the the outer edges of it. Um, that's where most of the growth has taken place. So, you know, wouldn't be surprised if Ward 4, 3, and 7 are the ones that uh, end up being the, having to shed some of the outer edges of those wards and absorbed into other ones just because of the population balance. So um, it will certainly be interesting and, um, and again, it, it just from a historical perspective, again, Nashua, has, we've always done a very good job, and um, and and I want to make sure we continue to do it that way as well. Thank you. Okay, Alderwoman, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the 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 comment that I want to make is that. Um, First off, I love the diversity of Ward 3, and um, I, I, I love my French Hill. I love the historic district. I love um, the area that I live in. Um, but I, I will tell you when I first became um, a state rep and walking the wards and, and learning that lines are drawn in the middle of the streets and you need a waterway or a, a middle of a street to, to create a line. Um, and I, I gave um, um, Alderwoman Schmidt the, the wrong when I said um, the Hudson. I, I did mean Litchfield. I knew it was um, Litchfield. And I made a joke about, you know, it should be the middle of the river, not all the way to the other side of the river um, is where a line should be, should be drawn. Um, but yes, when you look at Ward 3 and, and many of the other wards, you will see that um, you know, there's a bump out that goes onto the other side of Amherst Street, which, you know, takes into Franklin and and um, many of the streets within that area, Beacon Street and, and so on. And then the rest of it is between Ward 2 and um, Ward uh, 4. And then when you go to the top of my of my ward, you know, you, the, we've got these streets that 
Um, there's a, a little bit of an arm that goes over here and this little part of the half of the street belongs to Ward 3 and not all of it. So it does get confusing and I can respect what um, Alderman um, Clemens was saying relative to um, trying to draw the lines to, to keep the population equal within each ward. I know it's a balancing act, um, but again, that's what makes this legislation so important. So it's Nashua that helps make that decision and not um, a group of politicians coming in and making the decision. Um, I, I agree with what also what um, Alderman Lopez had said relative to um, you know trying to keep like communities together um, those that live within that community can um, relate. I, I love the fact I have such a diverse um, ward um, and I feel like I can relate to all sides of it. But yes, I do understand where he's talking about where he has to go from one far end to the other. And when you look at Ward 4, you see the, the river kind of literally runs through it. Um, so um, yes, it, it, it is a, it's a monstrous task and you know, perhaps it would be better for him to have taken part of Ward 6, who knows, but uh, it'll be a decision that should be made by Nashua. And um, we should stay whole and we should keep it that way. So thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, so I think I this is great. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you, Alderman Kelly. Um, I uh, am co-sponsoring this. I think it's right and fair, um, but I would also hope that all of our city state reps are in on this and are going to work together to make sure that uh, the city takes a stand as to how this should be done in a fair and just way. I agree with the comments that both Alderman Lopez and Alderman Clemens have made. So with that being said, uh, Alderman Kelly, will you please call the roll for resolution R-21-125, please. Sure thing. Okay. Alderman Garen. Yes. Alderman Clemens. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Kelly is a yes. Alderman Cleaver. Yes. We have five yeas and zero nays. Okay, so motion carried. We're on to new business ordinances. For us this evening, we have 021057, providing for represent representation of the LGBTQ community on the Cultural Connections Committee. I'll move for final passage of 021057 by roll call. Okay, thank you. Um, Alderman Lopez, would you like to speak on ordinance 021057 since you're one of the top sponsors? Yep, uh, and I would actually like to make a motion to amend the ordinance uh, insofar as to in also include representation from uh, the deaf community. And I would like to speak on it. Okay, Alderman Lopez. So um, as many of you know, I was the chair of the Cultural Connections Committee at the time where we rebooted it into the uh, Cultural Connections Committee from the former Mayor's Ethnic Awareness Committee. Um, the committee was originally uh, founded uh, by Mayor Donches uh, in the early 80s um, in order to um, provide additional access uh, of from specifically the, the African-American uh, community uh, to city government during a time where there were some concerning um, difficulties between police and community engagement. Now, in more recent times when I was carrying the Ethnic Awareness Committee, um, which ultimately became Cultural Connections, we were pretty proud of the progress that we'd made in a lot of areas, aware that much more needed to be done, but some very important uh, efforts sprang from Nashua that have benefited the entire state of New Hampshire. Chief among them is the Disproportionate Minority Contact uh, Program, um, at that time uh, managed by Andrew Smith. And that was a very important uh, effort in order to resolve that issue of uh, diversity uh, representation uh, in regards to police contact. 
But at the time, uh, when we were looking at ethnic awareness versus cultural connection, one of the reasons we made the, um, the switch was because even the term ethnicity is very, very difficult. Um, if you look at a survey, you'll have a whole bunch of questions on race, which race you qualify as. And then ethnicity, generally speaking, you only see it refer to, are you Hispanic or non-Hispanic? Even though it refers to a much, much wider range of uh, cultural um, heritages, um, Jew, Jewish people come to mind. Um, and then there's a, a whole a whole nother wide range of um, terms. So we had switched it over to cultural connections committee, first and foremost, to improve the dialogue over the differences between race and ethnicity in the context of how they were meaningful in a community setting. So that was how we made the decision to move towards cultural connections. Um, but while culture has traditionally been uh, an amalgamation of uh, place of origin, um, traditions and rituals, maybe religious beliefs um, and that type of thing. There were a lot of cultures that we felt were not represented in the concept of culture at the time, but we weren't sure there was appetite in order to introduce those changes. The GLBTQ X culture has, or GLBTQ plus culture has rapidly not evolved, but presented itself in recent years because their rights have been recognized. They're no longer stigmatized. They're not in the, the DSM as, a, as an illness. Um, we've made a lot of social progress in that area um, in recognizing the GLBTQ population. And it was one of the two populations that we really felt should ultimately be represented culturally in Nashua, where the current committee's purpose is to give those cultures a voice uh, give them some ability to influence city policy uh, as the mayor sees it, um, and then also to promote inclusion and um, participation from those cultures. So I'm certainly happy that the GLBTQ, uh, GLBTQ plus um, is going to have cultural representation now that we're able to really embrace their culture for everything that it offers. Um, I also wanted to bring the deaf uh, culture into this because deaf culture is somewhat unique among um, disability communities. Uh, I know as a legally blind person, I wouldn't consider myself as having a blind culture per se. Um, deaf culture has its own language. It has its own experiences in a lot of ways and a lot of uh, perceptions uh, of the world around them that is particularly important to us uh, in this day and age. You see uh, in Governor Sununu's uh, emergency broadcast, he's got a person doing American Sign Language uh, right next to him in order to communicate that effectively. Um, it's increasingly uh, prevalent. Even people who were born with hearing um, have been embraced into deaf culture when they've had their hearing damaged or um, you know, impaired either due to an accident or military service uh, or um, some other situation. And I think it's important to have that perspective that um, deaf culture brings, not only as a unique culture, but as the potential for someone to take what may have traditionally been considered a disability or an impairment and turn it into a characteristic or a strength that is celebrated and shared by others. So that was my thinking between adding um, deaf culture as well as uh, GLBTQ+. Uh, it's not my intention to take anything away from uh, either community. Um, I just think that we should be take the opportunity to be inclusive in how the Cultural Connections Committee uh, is able to do its mission. Okay, thank you, Alderman Lopez. Is there anyone else from the Personnel Committee who would like to speak? I would. Okay, Alderman Kelly. Alderman Lopez, I appreciate uh, this amendment and I think it makes sense. I did have a question though is it the most effective way to, to single out a specific disability or can we just make it a disability community representative? If I can respond. Yes, Alderman Lopez. Deaf culture is very much um, at the forefront of, of establishing its own uh, cultural identity, much more so than many other um, other community or communities of people with disabilities. Uh, people with mobility impairments, for example, 
can basically still communicate and share information in the same traditional ways they do that. Um, blind people, we do have uh, some stuff that we do together where we, you know, we have activities, we have some sports that are particular um, to our own um, skill sets. I don't know if anybody here is sort of goal ball, um, but uh, it's literally a game you play blindfolded um, and the ball has a little bell in it. Um, so there are some cultural characteristics in other communities with a disability, but they're not anywhere near as elaborate, developed, and uh, organized as the deaf culture uh, has become. And I think we are missing out on a, a, a population and uh, neighbors that offer potential by not specifically reaching out to them. If we wanted to add additional representation by other, uh, for, for people uh, who represent communities of people who have disabilities, I wouldn't necessarily be opposed to it if we identified those, but in my mind, I think deaf culture definitely stands on its own for all the work that they've done in developing that, that culture over time. Does that add to your question, Alderwoman Kelly? Uh, yes, thank you for a thoughtful answer. I appreciate that. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? No one? I just, before we vote on it, I just want to clarify what that is. You're, you're amending to include a deaf culture. Is it just one? Do we have to give a specificity in terms of how many? Uh, generally, we see these come forward with like two people from the LGBTQ community or one from the deaf community. So I just want to make sure that was clarified before we vote on it. I don't think the, um, uh, the motion actually includes a number for either. I think it just has representation, which would consist of one or more in my mind. Okay, so in the ordinance, it says at least two of the members of this particular committee will be from the LGBTQ um, community. Okay, so there's a minimum of seven and a maximum of 15 people. So I would think that um, Alderman Lopez, you could say um, that at least two people from the deaf community would mm -hmm. be members of the uh, committee or one or. Uh, I would be happy to say it. two. And I would point out that um, particularly with the G LGBTQ plus and deaf communities, you can have more than one represent, like a representation from both. You could have somebody who's bisexual and deaf uh, or somebody who's deaf and um, representing Latinos. So. I think we could put the two in there and it's not gonna pigeonhole anybody into being like, oh, I'm just the one thing so I can't represent the other committee or the other community. Okay, that's fine. So Alderwoman Kelly, do you want to um, read your motion again, adding in the amendment? It's Alderman Lopez's motion, but I believe the clarification is that he would like to amend the, um, amend the potential ordinance to include up to two um, members of the deaf community to the Cultural Connections Committee along with the two LGBTQ members. Is that correct? Right, yeah, that's right. Okay, do we have any other questions from committee members before we vote? I, I trust uh, legal to understand the difference, but I would say probably at least instead of up to, just because of that that overlap where some people may have multiple categories. You could have the one person in there who's like super diverse and has all the categories and you don't wanna like ban them because you have two other members representing something. So I would just hope that legal, when they review this, uh, understand that nuance. It's so funny, so I, as soon as I said up to, I was like, I probably should have said at least, you're so sharp. Okay, mm -hmm. we're good. Yeah, at least two. Okay, all right. Will the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Karen. Yes. Alderman Clemens. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Kelly is a yes, Alderman Cleaver. Yes. And we have five yeas and zero nays on the, on the motion to amend. Okay, so now the motion is 
to approve and I just lost what it was. I can I can make uh, ordinance yeah ordinance zero dash two one dash zero five seven was the as amended as amended I'm sorry thank you that's okay yep all right we'll take roll on that unless anyone has any additional comments um Alderman Karen yes Alderman Clemens yes Alderman Lopez Yes. Um, and Alderman Cleaver. Yes. We have five yeas and zero nays. Okay, that ordinance is carried. Okay, uh, we're taking nothing off the table. Do we have any public comment? I don't see anyone. No. Correct. Okay, general discussion. Alderman Clee has her hand up. Okay, Alderman Clee. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And I'd like to thank the committee for um, their action on um, the redistricting um, um, resolution, as well as um, I wanna make a comment. We talked earlier when uh, Mr. Morgan was, um, we were discussing his nomination and so on. And we talked about the importance of internet and having a good, strong internet. Um, a perfect example of it is I've been playing CTV host up until just a few moments ago because our CTV person, um, his internet was down and um, his whole area was kind of um, hurting. So um, it is important for all of New Hampshire, but you know, I'm gonna stick with Nashua to have a really good, strong, um, communication and to have good internet and so on. And I, I know we've discussed other alternatives to internet and, and that's a discussion we need to have, but um, to have someone like uh, Mr. Morgan on that kind of committee who I know will speak to the needs of Nashua, um, the importance of it, I, I truly just saw with um, our CTV person who could not get on and I, I was just fired, he took over. So um, I'm <laughs> glad to release that, that those duties, but it, it is extraordinarily important. And um, I think Mr. Morgan's gonna do a great job. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, we marked by the Alderman. I do not see anyone who wants to make remarks. Okay, so uh, possible non-public session? There's none. Okay, so Alderwoman Kelly. Can we I have a motion? I move to adjourn. I move to adjourn by roll call. Okay, would the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Karen. Yes. Alderman Clemens. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Kelly is a yes. Alderman Cleaver. Yes. We have five yeas and zero nays. Okay, motion is carried. So the personnel committee meeting is closed at 8.08 .08 p.m. Thank you everyone for participating this evening. Thank Good you night. everyone. Thank you.